Gosu is a two to four player card game from Moonster. It's a hand management game that plays in about 30 minutes or so. In Gosu, you are trying to build the biggest army of goblins and prepare for a series of great battles. Uh, the game is basically a deck of cards, uh, but these cards are beautifully illustrated representations of five different goblin colors and clans. You have the white ancient gobins, the green alpha goblins, the, uh, the black dark goblins, the blue mecha goblins, and the red fire goblins. Uh, each of the goblin cl uh, clans, uh, they have a different specialty, uh, even though certain abilities uh, do overlap. So, for instance, an ancient uh, gobin may help you draw more cards, or uh, it could give you an extra turn. Um, and, and a fire goblin, it may let you destroy another goblin uh, on the table. So you'll put any number of goblin clans in your army. Um, so you can specialize in uh, one or two colors, or try to get as many as you can fit uh, into the area. So in the box are 100 cards and some nice-looking cardboard tokens. Um, the artwork on the cards is easily the best feature of the game's components. Uh, the goblins are incredibly detailed and they have a charismatic quality that I haven't seen in many board games. Um, when I look at these cards I'm reminded of some of my favorite comic book art which can really express the character's attitude uh, with a facial expression or a cool pose. You're gonna get three types of uh, goblins uh, within each of the unique clans. You're gonna get level one goblins which are Bakudos, level 2 goblins are your heroes, and your level 3 goblins are your generals. Uh, you're also going to get some, uh, some tokens, and you're going to get an activation token, and uh, actually each, each player gets two of these uh, before you start the game. You get one advantage token, and this thing breaks ties, and it gives bonuses during the game as well. And you're also going to get um, some victory tokens. And these are what you're going to win uh, in the great battles uh, and win the game with. So the other thing that should be mentioned is the rule book. Uh, it's a full color uh, small booklet uh, that is written with humor and wit. And it's sprinkled with some of the uh, great artwork. And the rules are one of the many touches that set this game above and beyond uh, more mundane productions. So in this video I'm going to be using the official tournament rules variant. So the way I set it up here it's going to be different than if you've only played using the rule book included in the box. And The reason, uh, the reason why I, I play with this variant is because I think the game is remarkably better uh, using the tournament rules and it's really not that much more complicated. So to play Gosu uh, tournament variant Everyone's going to take two matching activation tokens and then randomly decide who starts uh, out with the advantage token. Uh, next, you shuffle those beautiful cards and deal seven to each player. And then you start a card draft. And on this card draft, with the seven cards that you're dealt, you're going to take two of those cards uh, in your hand. Then you're going to pass the remaining five uh, clockwise. Um, and then when you receive those five cards, you take one, and you keep on, uh, you keep on doing that until everybody has, and, and chosen uh, seven cards, and it really fixes the original game's problem, uh, of like drawing a bum hand and having one player just steamroll the, uh, the rest of the players. Uh, so the point of Gosu is to have a bigger goblin army than your opponent. You build your goblin army by laying cards down in three levels uh, or rows. So each level can hold five goblins and is numbered starting from the bottom. So at the bottom is level one, uh, middle is level two, and the top is level three. And you place goblins from left to right on these rows starting on level one. Okay, and the first goblin you lay down is going to be a Bakudo, which is your level one goblin and the first one is free to place. On your second turn 
you can now place a hero of the same clan, um, or you can, uh, the hero has to be the same clan as your Bakudo, or you can lay another Bakudo right next to it of the same clan, and that's going to be at no cost. Another option is to lay a Bakudo of a different clan. And to do that, you must pay a cost of two discarded cards uh, from your hand. Now, it may not sound like a, a lot, but in Gosu, there's no phase where you automatically draw cards. So you're going to have to trade your activation tokens uh, to get new cards or activate a specific goblin power uh, by placing a token on it. And only a few goblins have... Uh, card drawing abilities, so you're going to have to use your cards pretty wisely. So every card in, in Gosu has text, so you'll have to make sure you read each one very carefully uh, to learn the keywords and the various abilities of the goblins. And you're only going to take one action per turn. Uh, then your opponents take theirs, and then you keep playing until everyone passes on their turn. Now in the rule book, you're able to keep playing pretty much indefinitely when another player passes. But in the uh, tournament variant, any remaining players um, can only make up to 10 moves after uh, one player has passed. Then the round is over, and you count up the card values. And this is what's called the Great Battle. And the card values are listed on the right side of the card. Um, and it's pretty streamlined in that Ozeki's your level 3 goblins are always going to be worth 5 points. Uh, your level 2 heroes are always worth 3 points. And your level 1 bakudos are always worth 2. So you know if you have 3 cards, it's going to be 10 points pretty much automatically. So the winner of a great battle gets a victory token, uh, and then you move on to the next round. And, I mean, it, it kind of... It's probably the hardest thing to get gamers to understand at first is that after a round, you don't reset the play area and you don't draw new cards. But don't worry, it's not as scary as it sounds. Because, I mean, your, activ your activation tokens can get you uh, cards if you really need them. Um, at first, you're probably going to use up all your cards and not have a whole lot left for the uh, end of the round. But eventually, you'll develop a strategy and, and you'll start saving good cards uh, for when you really need them. So normally, the game ends once someone collects three victory tokens. Uh, but there are goblins in the deck that actually have victory conditions on them. And a round, and sometimes even a game, can end uh, when these uh, conditions are met. So your first game may take a while, with everyone reading the effects and learning how the cards work together. But it gets shorter over time. Uh, my first game of Gosu lasted probably two and a half hours and when we finally finished I never wanted to play again but that's until I found the tournament rules so I went ahead and tried it uh, with my gaming group with these new tournament rules and it was a totally different experience the draft and the 10 move limit completely fixed uh, the game for me now I'm not saying it's perfect but we had a great time playing it, and I was surprised at how just a couple of tweaks can change how I felt about the game. So some, some hand management games, they force you to make tough decisions, but Gosu will burn your brain at times uh, when you're trying to figure out what goblins to play and what goblins to discard. You'll have to throw away great cards all the time, uh, and you'll experience remorse instantly when you toss out that goblin you had been saving for the cool text effect just so you can play a goblin that would give you more points in a great battle. So, Gosu is a highly tactical card game, and it can run a touch long sometimes. And sometimes it can be pretty vicious, but it does reward clever play, and those with an analytical mind are going to do very well. As far as players, uh, two players works best. Three is fine. Uh, I actually play it. Uh, with three most of the time. Four is probably pushing it. Um, the only It's because the more players you have, the more downtime you have. And with cards being so scarce, 
players with AP can bring this game to a screeching halt. But I really think you should play Gosu with the tournament rules a few times before making a decision about it. It's the type of game that just seems to get better the more you play. So the final verdict is, I think Gosu is a challenging brain burner uh, that is worth buying alone just for the cool looking goblin cards. This video brought to you by The Card Gamer. Visit thecardgamer.com for up-to-date information and follow The Card Gamer on Twitter. Thank you.